Welcome to the session on design of column bases. In this session, we'll be learning about the base slabs that has to be designed for the <coughs> steel structures. We find here a lot of columns are there. We'll be designing the slab, bas slab bases. For this column sections. In general, we call this slab bases as column bases. Column bases are of two types. One is called as slab base, the other one is called as gazetted base. In this session, we'll try to study about the design of bolted slab base. Here, the slab bases are provided. It is nothing but a steel plate that is provided below the column section to transfer the load onto the concrete bed where the pressure exerted at the bottom should be of uniform intensity. There is one simple slab base which has been constructed along the bed of the foundation. These are the anchor bolts that have been provided and this is a built up column that has been shown here in this particular picture where two channel sections have been placed face to face with the batten system. And this is the tie plate, these are the anchor bolts and this is the base plate. This is what we are going to study about today, the design of this slab base according to IS 800 2007 code. As I said earlier, there are two types of column bases are there. One is called a slab base where we are going to design this for a lighter load, approximately less than 1000 kiloton load. And slab bases will be designed for heavier loads. We will study about that in the another session. So this slab plate will be normally placed below the column section where the column section will be either hand cut or machine cut based on that we are going to design this. If it is a machine cut the load will be transferred to this base level will be 50 percent of the column load the factored column load and this is provided usually to distribute the load uniformly to the concrete bed from the concrete bed onto the soil. This is a stanchion, the base lamp, the web angle nominally provided and these are the anchor bolts which has to be designed if it is subjected to axial load along with the moment. If it is only subjected to axial load there is no need to design the anchor bolts. Nominally we can provide with num one number on each side that is maximum of two numbers or with four numbers like that. And you can find here, this is a concrete mat and this one, what you are finding here is the fasteners which are not designed. We are not going to design it, nominally we are going to provide 2 to 4 in numbers to the nominally assumed angles. Even angle is not designed here. And this type of slab bases are most economical, which are designed for the lighter load. And let us try to understand how to design this as per the code. Let us try to understand the slab base connection with respect to the 3D model created by using AutoCAD software. Now here you are observing a, a 3D model, a, this is a stanchion column section, the slab base connected by and nominally provided angle sections here to the web to the flanges the anchor bolts at four corners you can have only two numbers also 
just providing one here and one on the other side or to this angle sections anywhere you can provide it either provide to the slab base year one year one or provide four anchor bolts at the corners or even to this angle sections you can provide it Now let us try to understand this from the concrete bed. This is a concrete block. Over this you are going to place the slab base. We can either design a square, ba square slab base or a rectangular slab base. It's left to the discretion of the designer. For this, we are going to keep the column section. This can be either connected by welding or bolted. But in this chapter, we'll go with the bolted connection by providing either a nominal angle to the flanges and also to the web. We'll study about the welding in the other session. This can be connected together by the bolted connection. And join like this. Can make you understand this. the 3D model, even you can see the anchor bolts inside the concrete block. This will be the top view of this section. It will be important for your coming semesters to draw the drawing, the slab base, concrete block, the stanchion, I section, the angles on the connected to the flanges of the column, angles, two angles connected to the web of the, all are nominally provided. And these are the four bolts provided at the corners. This is a typical isometric view of the model. Let us try to understand this design from the taking the theory question. We will study it over there. Design of bolted slab. Now let us take a simple problem which is subjected to an axial load of 700 kilonewton and the section is already being given as a SHB 2250 at 46.8 kg per meter and the SBC of the soil, the safe bearing capacity of the soil is given as 180 kiloton per meter square. So you will be designing only the slab base. All other connection details are nominally provided. Now this is the stanchion of 225. Looking into the properties of the ISHP 225 at 46.8 kg per meter, you are going to get the properties of this one, the H. H is nothing but the depth of the section equal to 225 mm, the breadth of the flange BF equal to 225, the thickness of the flange equal to 9.15 mm. This has been taken from the extract of SP61 or from the steel table. By knowing this, we will come to know that this is a square column. We treat this dimension as square and we can design a square base plate. Even if this is a rectangular in nature, we can design a square plate, there is no problem. We will study this in one by one in the subsequent problems. Now given axial load is 700 kilonewton, let us try to factor it. 
by multiplying it by factor of safety of 1.5, we'll get 1050 kilonewton. Only axial load is acting. It is not this column is not subjected to moment. Therefore, a simple bas base slab is enough. Other so nominally provided bolts, as I said earlier, we are not going to design it. Now here if the base plate is obtained by the formula, factored load divided by bearing strength of the concrete. The bearing strength of the concrete, it depends upon the grade of concrete. Based on the grade of concrete, we are going to calculate the bearing stress or the bearing strength of the concrete. As per IS456, it is given as 0.45 times FX FCK in clause 34.4 page number 65 and 66 but in IS 800 it has been given as 0.6 times of FCK the permissible limit of bearing stress is given as 0.6 times of FCK however in our problem in this session or in the coming problems what we are going to solve we are going to restrict ourselves to a bearing strength of 0.45 times of FCK so I'm going to take this as 0.45 times of FCK for M20 grade concrete. The characteristic strength is 20 Newton per millimeter square. Therefore, the bearing stress is 9 Newton per millimeter square. And the area of the base plate is equal to 116.67 into 10 to the power of 3 millimeter square. Now let us study how to fix up the dimensions of the base plate. As I said earlier, this is a square column. The depth of the section is 225, the depth, breadth of the flange is 225, therefore it corresponds to a square column. So let us design a square base plate. Let me find out the dimensions of this. Already you know the area. The side of a square plate can be taken as a root of that A. It works out to be 241.56 mm. Sometimes we are going to provide the nominal angle here. Keeping that, you can extend this base width. The 41.56 is the mm required. You can provide much more than that to accommodate the angles that can be provided on the sides of the flanges of the corner. It's provided nominally, not designed in this case, but can be designed in the case of gusseted base. So a slab base of 360 or 370 or 380, something like that could be fixed. Absolutely, there's no problem. In fixing up this more than the area required so it is 380 by 380 we are fixed and let us find out the thickness of the base plate as per the code which is given is 7.4.3.1 in IS 800 code it says that the minimum thickness of the base plate shall be equal to 2.5 times W W is nothing but the net upward pressure of the exerted to the base lab and a B will try to explain you how. To. What is A and B? They are the projections, the larger and the smaller projection in the slab. And gamma M naught, we are going to obtain it from the code. It works out to be 1.1. Fi is the yield strength of the material, 250 Newton per millimeter square. And this value should be always greater than thickness of the flange. That means to say not less than thickness of the flange. So this is a formula. We are going to write it once again. We are going to design the one by one where I said the upward pressure W is calculated by using the formula PU divided by the net area area of the base plate provided. So whatever we calculate shall not be greater than the bearing strength of the concrete. Bearing strength of the concrete is given as 0.45 times of FCK and that works has worked out to be 9 Newton per millimeter square. So this is the upward pressure. It is equal to 7.27 Newton per minute square, well, less than the bearing strength of the concrete. This is a net upward pressure. A is the larger projection. So in this one, in the square plate, since it is a square column, I said I can design a square base plate. If that is the case, the projections, whatever the A and B we get, beyond the faces of the column will be equal. If you design a rectangular one, 
this A and B can be different or if you design a rectangular plate, the A and B can be made equal. You can have equal projection, unequal sides or unequal sides and equal, unequal projections. Anything like this, we can design it and we can observe all those things in the coming problems. So here we say that A and B are the larger and smaller. Whichever works out to be larger, you take. If this is the larger value, take that as A and take this as B. Or if this, if this side is larger, take that A, this is B. And as I said earlier, this is a square slab we have designed. Therefore, the projections also will be equal and that is equal to 380 is the total width of the base plate minus the depth of this section divided by 2. I will get the projection on either side. The same way this side. It is 77.5 mm. And we will substitute in the formula as given in the clause 7.4.3.1 with the thickness of the slab is 18.34 mm. That means it is greater than thickness of the flange. Thickness of the flange is 9.1 mm. This is a flange thickness. So we can provide much more than that, say 20 mm. And now the size of the base plate is 380 mm by 380 mm by 20 mm. We have designed the slab base. This will transfer, the load from the column will be transferred onto the base plate. From the base plate, it will transfer onto the concrete. Let us study about the connection details. Connections to be made with this. As I said earlier, the angles that will be provided will be a nominal one, not a design one. The and the bolts used to connect them to keep in position is also a nominal one. We are going to assume that the ends of the columns are machined or grind, grinded one or flushed one. That means to say the complete bearing will be taken up by this slab. Load will be transferred neatly onto the slab. We are going to provide a nominal angle like this. Nominal angle, as you observe, with a bolt of 20 mm diameter, two numbers on each side, year two, year two. And also you can provide with the anchor bolts. Will be nominally provided. I'll show you this anchor bolts in the last part of this session. In the drawing part where the anchor bolts are provided. The four numbers have been nominally two numbers are enough, but still we can provide with the four numbers. Let us try to understand the design of the concrete block. This is a concrete block that will be designed below the base slab. The load that is acting is 700 kiloton. Take an additional load of 10 to 15 percent of the column load to know the weight of this concrete. By knowing the volume of this and the density, we can calculate the actual sulfate of the concrete but here since we don't know it's an approach we are making we can take some 10 to 15 percent of the axial load I've taken here 0.1 means it is 10 to 15 10 percent of the axial load so totally it works out to be 770 kiloton divide this load by the SBC of the soil you'll get the area of the footing Area of the footing is 7.28 meters square and whether it is a square slab or a rectangular slab, design always a square concrete block. And the depth of the section will always depend on the <coughs> projections here with the dispersion angle. Since we are designing a square block, take the root of this area, it is 2.06 meters and let us take equal to 2.1 meter. So the size of the block will be 2.1 by 2.1 square in nature. The thickness of the block always depends upon the dispersion angle. Dispersion of, will take place from the end of the loading system and plate is the one which will transfer its load onto the concrete. From the end of this we are going to take the dispersion angle as 45 degree 
and whatever the depth of this section will be equal to the projection behind the face of the base slab. So I have to calculate this. It's very simple to calculate the projection here. It's 2.1 minus 0.38 divided by 2 will get me the projection and that is equal to 0.86 meters. Say I'll make it as 0.9 meter and the complete size has been fixed as it's fixed as 2.1 by 2.1 by 0.9 meter. This is the concrete block. Now you can see, have a look on the final view, the elevation of the base slab along with the concrete block. You can observe the anchor bolts here, a J type 1. If this J bolt bolts or an, any anchor bolts can be inserted in a tube like structure here, which are called as ferrule. We are provided with four numbers of bolts of 20 mm diameter. The nominal angle you can observe here, 75 by 75 mm, connected together by bolts here. Totally a foot four, four bits, two either side and two this side. That is a stanchion. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, share this with the other students and subscribe if you are not subscribed. Thank you very much. Thank you.